Hey, what's up? This is Dave, and I'm making my gear. This week I've been working on the Atari Punk console with a 16-step sequencer. I ran into a few hiccups using Altium Designer, so I'm actually using KiCad now. All right, let's take a look at the schematic. First up is the power section. We've got 12 volt DC input, just using a standard power adapter, a couple filter capacitors, and this diode here for reverse polarity protection. So basically, if the power supply is connected incorrectly, the circuit won't be damaged. Now let's look at the Atari Punk console, and it is the exact same as the Synth DIY one, except I've made a few changes. The pots in that circuit are 470K, and I've changed them to 100, and I've added a current limiting resistor. I also added a control voltage input to both ICs. This CV right here controls pitch, and this CV right here controls pulse width. And the 10K resistors, R3 and R4, are also current limiting resistors. Now let's take a look at the clock and counter portion of the circuit, or the sequencer. The clock is a simple A-stable 555 timer configuration, pulled straight from the data sheet, nothing too fancy here. I'm using a... I'm using a one mega ohm potentiometer to control the speed of the clock, and I'm using a one microfarad capacitor to control the timing. For the 16-step sequencer, I'm using two 4017 decade counter ICs. The first 4017 counts from step one to eight. When it reaches step nine, it sends a pulse through an AND gate to enable the second 4017, which controls steps nine through 16. Uh, to chain them together, I needed this. The Q9 output, or step nine output, of the first 4017 is connected to one input of the AND gate and the clock to the other input uh, of the AND gate. And the output of the AND gate connects to the clock input of the second 4017, ensuring that it advances when both conditions are met. So when all these conditions are high, this is enabled. So now let's take a look at the sequencer itself. All the steps are exactly the same. So each step has a single pull double throw switch, either enabling or disabling the step. There's also a potentiometer for CV control, letting me send voltages back into the 555 timer to manipulate either pitch or pulse width, depending on whether I'm using the CV output jack or the gate output jack. And we also have an LED indicator to indicate whether the uh, steps are on or off and a gate output that can trigger external devices like an ADSR. Okay, now let's jump to the PCB. It's a pretty large board. It's about 26 centimeters wide. So in this direction here, and 12 centimeters high. The reason for this size is that my CNC machine can't do double-sided boards that easily. So I have to keep that in mind when I'm laying the traces out for all the components. So all the blue traces are located on the bottom layer and the red traces are the top layer. The red traces, think of them like jumpers. So I'll be actually using physical wire to create those connections and manually bridge uh, one connection to another. For the drill holes, let's take a look at a close-up of a drill hole. So for the drill holes, uh, I'm using one millimeter size hole and the pads I made two millimeters. So I have a little bit more to solder to when I'm assembling everything. I kept these components pretty simple. For example, this is for the single pole double throw switch. These are going to be panel mount. So I don't really need to be that particular about the footprint because all of these devices are going to be connected with wires. So that's pretty much it. The next steps, what's next? I've ordered all the remaining parts that I need. I need tons of potentiometers. I need a lot of switches. And most of those components will arrive within the next few days. In the next video, I'll be cutting the board on the CNC machine, soldering all the components, and hopefully getting a pretty solid sound demo. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video.